So it's a matter of using your creative mind to find a solution and then work your butt off to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Look, you've got to decide, are you, are, are you, do you want to be successful? Do you want to push forward? Do you just, are you just comfortable? Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hey, we've got the North Star Real Estate Conference coming April 24th and 25th in Minneapolis. And this conference is gonna be for everyone. We're covering the gamut of real estate. If you are just beginning, this conference is for you. If you have 100, 200, 500 units, this conference is for you. If you wanna get into commercial real estate, this conference is for you. And the best part about the North Star Real Estate Conference is the networking. The networking is phenomenal. We've got high performers there. We've got amazing speakers and amazing attendees that are gonna be adding a ton of value to your business. We can't wait to see you there April 24th and 25th. Check it out, I'll see you there. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. And on this hump day hustle, I've got Matt Jones with me as always. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Todd? Doing fantastic. Anything new, Matt? Any lessons learned? Uh, well, we just recently went to the uh, uh, Pine Financial Success Summit. And so that yeah. was a really great networking opportunity. So I meet, met some new people and uh, so hopefully got some uh, new stuff going on pretty soon. How about awesome. yourself? Anything new with you? Yeah, I mean, I was at that uh, success summit as well. Thought it was really good. They always put on a good deal. I think they've been doing it now like nine or so years in a row, and they get pretty good attendance. I, I believe uh, I can't remember the exact number they said, but they had over two hundred people that signed up. Um, you know, there's always some people that don't attend, so I, I'd say maybe 150 to 175 people showed up. So that was really good. Uh, again, yeah, same, same thing, met a lot of good people. Uh, the networking is always the best when you go to these conferences. Um, a high-end networking is, is always what you're looking for. So that was definitely good. And um, I, got, I got another speaking gig uh, that I'm doing tonight. So it'll be kind of fun. Um, but that's, uh, I guess that's about it right now. One of the big things I'm working on is asset management. I've got two properties that aren't doing the way I'd like them to do. Um, we are not really too far behind on the projections, but we are definitely behind. Um, and I need to make sure they get to where they, they need to go. And now is the time we've got some renovations that need to be done. So we're really working hard on making sure all those renovations are ready to go for the spring market and, uh, and really, really pushing uh, to get these units rented out, increase our occupancy up to that 90 plus percent to be able to do a refinance. The goal is to refinance this uh, the early summer uh, or mid-summer to start the process. And, uh, and so that's what I'm, my big focus right now is just asset management, making sure we're hitting our, our metrics that we need to hit in order to get that uh, accomplished. Very good. Um, so I wanted to talk today about actually a Facebook post I, I put out there and it was on the uh, uh, multifamily mastermind Facebook group that I run and what I asked is what is holding you back from accomplishing your real estate goals and we got some interesting answers on it I, I was expecting Matt honestly I was expecting pretty much like everybody to say, oh, there's no deals out there or I can't find the money. Those are like the two biggest things most people say. And right now, especially finding the deals is really, really hard. I found it interesting to, to see that actually one person, uh, and they wrote, the, they wrote both money and the deals. Um, and then another person, I think more just being a smart aleck, uh, said that they're waiting for me to find them the deals. Um, but I, I, I thought, wow, that's really interesting. We had a lot of different reasons why people said, Hey, uh, you know, what's holding me back? You know, these are the things. Um, so I wanted to kind of go through that today and, and some of the answers that we got. Sounds good. Let's do it. Well, Matt, you, you responded. What yep. did you say? 
Uh, for me, what's holding me back is uh, procrastination and feeling comfortable with uh, where things are. Yeah. And so it's always easy to put off today what you can do tomorrow. And uh, especially if you feel like, oh, it's, it's not a big deal uh, to delay things. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll get to it. But then it's always just, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Yeah, and, that, and that's a tough one, obviously. The procrastination uh, and, and just feeling comfortable are really easy to fall into, to fall in that trap, because it's, it's just easy to, like you said, I'll get to it tomorrow. Um, a big part of it is knowing your identity, you know, knowing who you want to be and who you are. Uh, and we've talked about that before. Uh, that's, that's super important. I mean, if, if, am I really this person? Am I, is this who I really am? And, and knowing and understanding your identity, but you know, that's a part of it. I always like question is that, you know, could we like, could I form like this group that uh, we force people to go and, and do things that get them out of their comfort zone, like go force everybody to go jump out of a perfectly good airplane uh, go bungee jumping, you know, uh, you know, do these like kind of what you'd call riskier things to get people out of their comfort zone. Would that then translate into business and, uh, you know, and, uh, your personal relationships and stuff like that? Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that they translate cause it's a totally different thing. You know, your thrill seeking versus, um, versus your business and, and pushing the boundaries on, the, on your business. But, like so that would be kind of cool if there was a way we could exercise that muscle um, and probably have a lot of fun at the same time. That's what I tried to do with my kids is exercise that muscle, but I'm not sure how well it translates. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's, the, that's the difficult part, but definitely something that's challenging. And I think you just got to continue to work on every single day. I think one of the big things too as what I've been trying to do is look at my goals minimum once a week, look at my, the goals that I set out this year, and the goals that I set out this year are, are very detailed and, and they tell me what I want to accomplish this year and what I want to accomplish future further down the road. And then why am I doing it? Um, so I've been trying to review those every single week. And I feel like that helps me too to get my mindset right at the start of the week. Uh, and you could, you could review it every day if you needed to, um, or every couple of days, you know, if you, if it's Wednesday and you're just like, I'm not into it, go ahead and review those goals and, and understand why you're doing it. Yep. And I had been, uh, writing down my goals every day, but then I stopped a couple of weeks ago and I need to restart that again. So, you know, one thing that helps, uh, me and again, I'm not perfect at this at all. I, I procrastinate and, and, you know, I, I'm as guilty as everyone at, at feeling comfortable sometimes. I mean, I talk about it with my journey is, you know, I, I started buying these, I, I was doing stuff that was uncomfortable. You know, I was a teacher and I started buying these single families and doing these fix and flips and just, you know, like I'm writing these checks or getting these checks written for, you know, 200 K and uh, like that just stretched my whole brain like that that was super uncomfortable but uh, eventually it became really comfortable you know writing a check out for a couple hundred K or receiving that check back for a hundred or so K it was no big deal to have th this money in my hands where at first it was like whoa this is crazy this is I can't believe I'm dealing with this money um <clears throat> but I got comfortable then and, and I stuck with the single family fix and flips and I stuck with the single family rentals and I got really just complacent and comfortable with where I was at and didn't push that next uh, kind of limit, you know, that going on to that next level for a long time. I waited uh, for years and years and years, finally, until I just decided to push on. But it's, it's that getting stuck it is so just easy to do. And, and, uh, but, one of the things I do with the procrastination, I think that helps a lot is I just write everything down, you know, write everything down that I want to do that day. And I've got it right in front of me and I'm pointing at it. Um, you know, Monday, I've got every single thing I'm doing and it's by the, you know, by the hour, half an hour or whatever, how long it's going to take me. And I've got every single thing I'm going to do. And then I've got always a couple miscellaneous like main goals not, I should say miscellaneous main goals that I want to accomplish this week. And then I have some miscellaneous tasks that if I can get to them, I'll do them. So sometimes I do have like a, a complete miscellaneous items in my schedule. 
So I think writing it down and schedule, it's going to be going to be big. Yeah. My, my big thing I think for my problems is to make that decision every day to push yeah. myself outside of my comfort zone and to uh, not procrastinate on, on the things that I know I need to get done. Yeah. 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 And, and I don't have a magic answer. I don't think there is a tech necessarily a magic answer. It's got to work for you. You've got to figure out what's going to push you to that next level or what's going to motivate you to, to get there. If there was a magic answer, we'd all be super successful. Right. Um, but it's going to be, what's going to push you? What, what's your, why maybe you got to dig deeper. I don't know, but we all have to figure out that, that why another person put lack of focus. And that kind of goes with this procrastination, the whole theme, the same things, very, very similar, um, with it. So, um, and you weren't the only one that put procrastination, by the way, I'm scrolling through this list and other people put that, um, <clears throat> One person said not enough patience when you only have so much time during the day, week, month, um, makes me feel like I'm spinning my wheels. And my answer to that is, well, you need to hire somebody. If, if you don't have enough time in the day to do what you want to do, you need to figure out how do you hire somebody. And that can be a challenge because you're going, well, I don't have the income right now to hire somebody. But you know what? There's VAs out there that'll do work for fairly inexpensive. And, and I, I feel like once you hire that person, Ultimately, it's going to take you some time and effort to get that higher up to speed. But once you do hire people, you're going to see your business increase exponentially. And you'll be surprised that that extra, you know, 10, 15, 20 grand that you're spending on somebody it turns into 50, 60, 80 thousand dollars. So, so if it's you do an investment right, on yourself. It's absolutely, well, it's an investment on yourself. It's an investment on your business. I mean, you've got to continue to push on. You're only one person. So you just need to stop thinking about hiring. You need to, you need to actually hire and do it. You've got to grow your business. If you're not growing, well, you're dying, right? Yeah. Um, time is another thing. Somebody put their, their day job, uh, sucks up too much time. Uh, you know, another person just put, put time in general. Uh, again, that goes back to hiring, delegating, figuring out how to, you know, get other people to be a part of it. Whether, again, whether it's you're hiring an employee, whether you're bringing on a business partner, whether you're, um, you know, having somebody that, that's commission do more work like a realtor, broker, instead of digging at the properties yourself, hire them to do it. Uh, you just pay them for the results. You know, there's a lot of different ways to to skin the cat. Um, I do this, I, you know, I do mentoring on the side and I, I had a mentoring uh, client that was all, uh, you know, we first started, they wanted to do everything start to finish. They wanted to do, they wanted to buy, they wanted to you know do it all. And as we went, they realized that just wasn't really for them. And, and they probably didn't have the time capacity to really want to do all of that. So they decided they're really good at one thing and that's what they focused on. And, and now very focused on just that one thing that they're going to do and be very successful at it. So sometimes you might have to pull back a little bit and go, is it really worth me doing everything or could I be better at doing just one thing and finding the right people to surround me to fill in those other gaps so we can do business? Hey, we've got the North Star Real Estate Conference coming April 24th and 25th in Minneapolis. And this conference is gonna be for everyone. We're covering the gamut of real estate. If you are just beginning, this conference is for you. If you have 100, 200, 500 units, this conference is for you. If you wanna get into commercial real estate, this conference is for you. And the best part about the North Star Real Estate Conference is the networking. The networking is phenomenal. We've got high performers there. We've got amazing speakers and amazing attendees that are gonna be adding a ton of value to your business. We can't wait to see you there April 24th and 25th. Check it out, I'll see you there. Yeah, if you try to do everything, you're gonna do everything poorly. It, well, it, yeah, especially especially those who are working, you know, another job or have another business or whatever. Uh, you just can't do everything. It's just not going to happen. So, what are you really good at? What can you really focus on? 
and to be successful at that and then surround yourself with the right people that can fill in the gaps. Um, and, and this goes along with somebody said, some team members who aren't pulling their weight, very hard to replace. Well, eventually you just got to cut the fat, right? In, in my opinion, I don't know exactly the situation because he didn't explain what's going on. Um, but, you know, he said, the party is exceedingly hard to replace in my market. And, and maybe that's true. I find that hard to believe that you can't figure out how to replace this person or people. In my opinion, in my experience, it's never the right answer to keep somebody on that's not doing the job you need them to do. Um, I've done that with contractors or I've kept them around because maybe I've paid them too much already. And I'm like, well, I'll just milk it out and keep them on so they can do some work and I'll get ahead eventually or tie at least break even, you know, and it just never works out. I get farther and farther behind and now I feel like they got to do more and more work. Um, so just, just get rid of them, cut the fat, take your losses and move on. I would rather have, if I've got a bad contractor and they're not doing their work, and sometimes I, that, that's the other thing. I'm like, oh, if I fire them now, my property is going to sit vacant for you know a week or two before I can find somebody else. Well, you know what? That It's worth it. Just get rid of them now. There's never anything good that's going to come out of it. Just get rid of them now. Let your property sit vacant for two weeks be, and then hire somebody else out. And guess what? You're going to be more determined to hire that next person very quickly um if you actually get rid of the contractor right now today it, i'm not saying this this guy's problem is a contractor but it goes with anything yeah so one of the uh one of the answers matt i thought was interesting and i wanted to talk about that a little bit uh somebody said that they don't like the question it says the question drives me nuts uh, you know, if you can identify the problem and fix it, well, that's exactly what hopefully you're trying to do. You know, if you can answer this question, you're at least you're thinking about, okay, I have things I need to work on. Right. Uh, and then you should identify that and then you should try to fix it. You should work on how do we fix it? But he said, do you think Elon Musk could answer this question? And his thought was no, Elon couldn't answer this question. Uh, in my opinion, Elon should be able to answer this question and everybody should, because if you can't look at yourself, your business and look at it critically and say, what's holding us back from getting to the next level, then you think you've arrived, right? You think there's nothing wrong with your business, with, with you personally, with whatever, and you've arrived and that you've become the epitome of you know everything. Uh, well, I think you're going to fail and fall on your face if that's the way you think. So my guess, Elon, I, my guess is he knows what he needs to work on. My guess is he knows what he needs to do better. My guess is he's working on it, hiring the right, trying to hire the right people, trying to continue to grow his business. My guess is he critically thinks about it. I, that's just a guess. I don't know Elon Musk personally, but everybody I do know that's successful in business doesn't look at a question like this and say, oh, I can't, I don't have any weaknesses. We are where we need to be and we are amazing at every single thing we do. So the first step is to be self-aware of your yeah. own limitations so you can work on them. Yeah, you've got to be self-aware of, of what your limitations are. You you have to understand that. I mean, we, my business has a lot of weaknesses, and, and I work at filling those weaknesses. What you need to be doing is looking at your business, looking at your weaknesses, and going, what's one thing that I can do better today, right? And if you can do one thing better, if every single day your business is getting better just one little bit at a time, it's the compound effect, right? It's Darren Hardy's The Compound Effect. If you can just do one extra thing each and every day that's going to snowball and that's going to create something massive and successful but if you always think that you've arrived and you can't answer that question because you're too good to answer it whatever it is you're just going to fail and i don't i'm not throwing this person on their bus and saying he's like 
he probably had a different mindset when he was talking about it. Um, but just how it was written, I thought, hmm, we have to really be self-aware of our business. I think this is an important question to be asking. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and he did, you know, I, I answered the question and, and uh, somebody else kind of answered as well. And it was about financing. He said, um, he said something about, you know, well, what if you can't qualify for not financing? Do you give up or do you go find partners? And I said, well, you don't give up and you work on and you find partners, but you continue to work on your weakness, right? Which is financing and whatever that reason is, whether it's lack of credit, whether it's income, debt to service, whatever debt, debt service, whatever it is. You've got to work on that to push on. When I first started this business, I ran out of availability to get loans. I could only get four loans in my personal name and I couldn't figure out how to get any more loans. So what did I do? I found partners and I partnered with people. And then what did I do? I knew I only had so many friends, you know, I couldn't just continue to partner, at least at that time, that was my limitation. So what did I do? Well, first of all, continue to build relationships to find new partners. So that was one answer. And the other answer is I worked really damn hard trying to find more financing. So I called over a hundred banks. I asked all these banks to get me financing. I got rejected over and over and over again, but eventually I found enough banks to be able to do business with to now where I could partner with people, but I could also do it on myself, on my own and my, and myself. So I was able to, look at that question, answer the question, and then figure out the solutions to, to that. That's the important thing. So it's a matter of using your creative mind to find a solution and then work your butt off to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Look, you've got to decide, are you, are, are, do you want to be successful? Do you want to push forward? Or do you just, are you just comfortable, right? And that's part of what we talked about earlier. So, Very cool. Awesome. Any, any, any comments, any other comments, Matt, uh, on this topic? Well, I was at the, the Pine Financial Success Summit, actually. I was talking to a woman who she didn't have any real estate, or real estate experience yet, and she was trying to figure out how she could apply her skills. And so I was just asking her, like, what can you do? And she can write. And so I said, uh, hey, you can use those writing skills to work with and partner with other real estate investors who are communicating with their investors. Uh, so that um, you can have a great email list going out essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a lot of people I think are stuck in that part of like, Oh, I don't know how I can overcome my problem. And then, so they just stop there. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a matter of thinking like, okay, this is not going to stop me, whatever it is, I'm going to find a solution for it. And then, you know, take the necessary actions to make it happen. Yeah. I think that's so why it's so important to continually be educated. Right. I mean, listening to podcasts, going to conferences, uh, going to meetups, you know, reading books, you learn that there's solutions to your problems. Nothing's brand new. Everything has been, mm -hmm. you know, in, in some way it's been discovered already. Maybe your exact problem isn't in a book, isn't in a podcast, isn't out there, but something very similar to where we can go, oh, I see how that relates to where I'm at. And we can get a solution to it. So you always got to keep your mind open. You've always got to be thinking about, okay, how can I have a solution to the problem that I have? And, you know, you go to enough conferences, meetups, read enough books, you know, listen to enough podcasts, uh, you are going to get solutions. You are going to have no problems that cannot be solved. It's just how it is. People and other people want to help you, whether they you pay them to help you or whether they do it for free, other people want to help you. So you will get what you want if you actually take the action that you need and set your mind to it. And I'm really excited about the upcoming North Star Real Estate Conference uh, because up there it's going to talk a lot about how to overcome many problems and uh, you know, get started in real estate and really excel in your real estate business. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, awesome, Matt. 
Um, I think that's a wrap for us today. You have a fantastic rest of the day and make every day a Saturday. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. It's a rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.